Residential red zone identifies the areas that were most affected by the earthquakes, generally where there was area-wide damage. There was damage all throughout parts of Christchurch, but in some areas the damage was so extensive that in order to repair or remediate houses, there'd have to be area-wide remediation carried out on the land and also repair to underground and overground infrastructure as well. So it couldn't be done uh, cost-effectively or in a timely fashion on a property by property basis. It would require large scale work to occur and probably take quite a bit of considerable time. The decision by the government to zone areas red was a social policy response. So the focus of that was to provide property owners with options for them to consider. Within Sierra, that work was led out of the social recovery team and that was a deliberate decision to ensure that the focus was on the property owners, on the communities, not on the properties themselves or on, on the land. The zoning decisions were made over a, a period of time and I'd say that our approach uh, adjusted based on feedback from the community and also advice that we sought from people that helped us to understand how to better communicate with property owners. Some of the learnings that we took out of that initial zoning decisions that were made uh, meant that we tried to focus our communication more directly at the residents that were affected and we tried to understand how they would prefer to find out the zoning decisions for their property. You wouldn't want to put a house on this land due to the liquefaction because it's really quite deep set, it's broken all the pipes underneath the ground, the infrastructure and the roading, not even the trees can grow very well because of that. And with the ground movement, in the red zone it's very likely, given another event, that the same thing would happen again, which is why it was highlighted as red. Unlike the flatlands red zoning, which was about damage to the land, the zoning in the Port Hills was based on life risk from rock roll and collapse from the earthquakes and also what hazards were there and what might happen to them in the future. So because of that potential risk to life and the fact that people had already um, unfortunately lost their lives in the Port Hills, the way that um, those messages were communicated had to be completely adapted to acknowledge the loss that people had gone through, the, the turmoil and disruption to people's lives. So it was really important to work with those people and make sure that they had the support available to them while decisions were being made. We had the opportunity as time went on to meet with property owners on a more individual basis with geotechnical engineers. So that involved um, property owners being able to come in and discuss their own property and get further understanding about why their property had been zoned either red or green and also get a better understanding about the um, hazard and life risk that applied to their property. In order to provide support for not only the property owner but also for the people that are delivering the difficult messages to the property owner, it's really important to make sure that you get advice from the people who know about these things. We had some experts in trauma and um, the stress that occurs after natural disasters be able to give us some ideas about the best way to to go about this in a way that made it really safe for the people that we're talking to, but also really safe for the workers, many of whom were also going through this trauma themselves. Previously there were a lot of houses around so um, our job was to make sure that the houses were secure once people had left. Now of course as time's progressed uh, our job is to get the land treated and um, it nice and cleared, make sure rubbish is removed that's dumped in the red zone, still communicating with the residents that are there and any residents that come back and visit their sites. 
a lot of people do come back and visit the Red Zone. There's different scenarios as to why. Um, sometimes people have lived there all their lives and their grandparents live there, their parents. Um, so there might be a particular tree that they love and they want to make sure that's saved. So we make sure that is saved um, wherever possible. People had prized gardens. Um, so they come back to see sort of what's there and sometimes they might want to take some plants to remind them of that so um, we make sure they have access to that. And just uh, family members coming from overseas, um, want to, they want to show them where it was so they might come and have a picnic on their site. And they talk about their neighbours and what their neighbours are doing now and, um, and whether they see them. So it's just being there to listen to that. The earthquakes in Canterbury affected uh, almost every property owner in the Greater Christchurch region, all to varying degrees. So some areas had cosmetic damage to the houses and, and other houses were pretty much destroyed and, and unlivable. And that created a range of stress for people, anxiety, and also impacts such as where are they going to live, what is their financial situation. Some property owners were unable to work because their place of employment had been affected. So it's important to be able to communicate technical information simply, to communicate information regularly and as soon as possible. And I think one of the key learnings for us and, and something that we attempted to do right from the very beginning is to front up in person and actually have someone at the highest possible level, and in Sarah's case, the chief executive, communicating directly to the property owners that were affected and explaining the technical information and what the Crown's intention is. And so it's important to tailor the engagement with the community. And we approach that by moving from large scale community meetings into smaller community workshops and then into more of an individualised case management approach with property owners, acknowledging that different property owners needed different levels of support and advice throughout the process.